Hi, this is Robin Ashford, Senior Director of Product Management at BMC. I'm really excited to be here today to be telling you all about our new containerized converged ITSM platform. Lots of great information today, but before we get started, I want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to the organizers of Las Vegas Rug. It's events like this that make the BMC Remini community what it is today, so thank you. Today's is going to be a virtual session. I can't join in person, unfortunately. We have 30 minutes of recorded presentation and a good 20 minutes at the end for open Q&A, which I'll be joining remotely. I look forward to your questions at the end. Let's get stuck in. Before we get started, I need to show this legal notice. There's some information I'm going to present today which represents BMC's future roadmap or features that aren't yet in our software. Please don't make buying decisions using information about the future of our products. BMC's plans may change. So with that out of the way, let's start with an introduction about containers. It's an interesting and complex landscape which IT managers and architects are navigating right now when deciding where to deploy their enterprise applications. BMC wants to make it easy for our customers to choose the right platform for their business. Our commitment is to support the deployment of our software, regardless of whether that's in a conventional on-premises data center, private cloud, public cloud, or even BMC Helix Cloud. Alongside the complexity about where to deploy your applications, we're also seeing a huge industry-wide shift in the architecture which supports enterprise software. It's clear that orchestrated containerization is destined to be the industry standard for business critical systems. Gartner's forecasting that by next year, more than three quarters of global organizations will be running containerized applications in production. What's more interesting from an adoption perspective is that last year there was a 30% growth rate in the number of enterprises with more than half of their applications hosted in containers. What we're seeing is that companies who adopt this technology are really seeing the benefits and consolidating on this new architecture. In many ways, BMC is miles ahead of our competitors in this space. We've been using containers on our BMC Helix SaaS for more than three years. Over that time, we've seen reductions in costs, improvements in stability and performance. We really believe that this technology delivers on its promises and there are such compelling benefits to move into this new architecture that from 2021, ITSM is exclusively deployed on containerized architectures. So what is so great about containers? Well, you can think of a container as almost exactly the same as a virtual machine, except that it shares its operating system kernel with the underlying host machine. So instead of shipping software, which you install into a virtual machine, we're now going to ship the whole container, which has all of the software pre-installed. That container can be deployed anywhere, onto bare metal, virtual hosts, to public cloud, private cloud, or on-premises, and it will work in exactly the same way wherever it's deployed. It's much easier to deploy a container than a virtual machine and to change your infrastructure configuration. For example, it's very easy to increase the number of containers handling reporting when it's time for a monthly report and to reduce them afterwards. Because the container shares an operating system kernel with the underlying host machine, containers are intrinsically lighter weight and take less memory and disk and have faster startup and better performance than an equivalent virtual machine. BMC's applications running in containers enable you to deploy highly secure architectures. Don't just take our word for it, the US government has audited and approved BMC's FedRAMP secure deployments on BMC Helix SaaS. Those deployments use the same container-based architecture that we're now making available for all customers. All of these enhancements are fantastic, but for me, the real story is that instead of investing our R&D efforts into supporting and testing our software on multiple operating systems and Java versions and web servers, we're now shipping a container image which works the same way anywhere it's deployed. That means that all of that effort is now focused on genuine innovation. That innovation is the part that I'm most excited by. I've been working in the BMC Remedy space for 21 years, and this latest release is hands down the best release BMC's ever done. You've got native AI capability for instant correlation, proactive problem management deployed in the BMC platform, smart IT PWA for fast, modern, highly configurable user experiences. This isn't just about the software we've got now, it's also about our roadmap. Our roadmap, I think, is genuinely game-changing for IT service management, AI ops, and service ops, and we want you to be on that journey with us. 
So there's a bit of a secret around this new industry wave of containerization, and that's that containerization itself isn't new at all. It's an old Unix concept. However, what is new is the orchestration of containers. Google have been running containers internally since 2005 and had an internal project called the Borg project to automatically manage the lifecycle of workloads running in containers. That project has evolved to become Kubernetes. It's this orchestration of containerized applications using Kubernetes that's responsible for the industry transformation we're seeing right now. Kubernetes is amazing. The more I've learned about this technology, the more impressed I am. You have service-based architectures for things like storage and DNS. Kubernetes is constantly monitoring the health of your applications and will automatically reconfigure the distribution of load across your infrastructure and replace containers that aren't performing correctly. With server-based architectures, disaster recovery capability typically requires a full replica of your production architecture sitting idle in another data center. Using Kubernetes, you can replace that legacy architecture with a hyper-efficient Kubernetes stretch cluster with more resilience using two thirds of the infrastructure and making that extra capacity available at all times. Kubernetes can scale different parts of your applications up and down as demand changes. All of this automated health checking and scaling means your operations teams can support more applications with far fewer resources. Kubernetes gives us an unprecedented insight into the behavior of the whole platform with observability down into the hardware and up into applications. When correctly designed, containerized applications are highly portable, allowing you to easily move your applications and workloads between on-premises, public cloud and private cloud. It's this portability that's one of the key aspects that makes this architecture so appealing. Because you can easily move between any of those locations, you're in a position to negotiate more strongly to get the best value from your private or public cloud or even your internal infrastructure. This architecture puts power back into your hands. BMC is all in with containerization and we're making a huge range of our software available on premises in containers this year. That includes Remedy Action Request System, BMC Remedy ITSM, Digital Workplace, Digital Workplace Catalog, Smart IT, Innovation Studio, Business Workflows and Multi-Cloud Broker. On the ITOM suite of software, we're effectively replacing TrueSight Operations Management and TrueSight Capacity Optimization with new software designed from the ground up as container-based architectures. So our new software isn't a lift and shift of our legacy software, so it's able to leverage all of the capabilities of container platforms. It's microservices based, it's auto-scaling, it's highly performant and resilient. This year, at the same time as we've made this huge step forwards with our ITSM software, we're also releasing BMC Helix Operations Management, Helix Service Assurance and Optimization, and Helix Intelligent Integrations. That's a huge step change in the pace of innovation you're seeing from BMC, and I think speaks very clearly about the kind of company that BMC is becoming, forward-looking, innovative, and leading the industry. So let's talk about platform convergence. The big theme of the ITSM releases this year is convergence. We've converged Remedy ARS and Innovation Studio into a single platform. Innovation Studio was previously only available on SaaS, but is now an integral part of the platform. And that means that you can, for the first time, deploy applications like Business Workflows and Multi-Cloud Broker on-premises. All of our existing ARS and ITSM customers are entitled to the Innovation Studio platform and can use it to develop low-code, no-code applications which have full access to your existing ITSM data. We've also converged all of the IT service management applications into this converged platform, which is going to greatly simplify the deployment, management and upgrade for those applications. The other side of convergence is the convergence of our BMC Helix SaaS and on-premises architectures into a single containerized architecture. All of our deployments from 2105 onwards will exclusively use a container architecture and we will no longer provide a server-based installation. Remedy ARS is an enduring and much loved brand that will be continuing. However, our Converge platform now combines Remedy ARS and Innovation Studio. When we're discussing the combined deployment, we'll be referring to that as Innovation Suite, which is the new name for the combination of Remedy ARS and Innovation Studio. 
As part of the upgrade to 2105, we're greatly simplifying the architecture and the number of databases. Previously, you may have deployed Smart IT, DWP, DWP Catalog as standalone but integrated applications with separate databases. A few customers may also have had business workflows or multi-cloud broker on BMC Helix SaaS in addition to an on-premises deployment. All of those applications are now hosted on our Converge platform and the data is hosted in a single Innovation Suite application database. That's a significant simplification and improvement on our previous architecture. I'd like to do a deeper dive now on the containerized architecture. The best way to think about the new BMC applications architecture is as a new platform onto which your applications are deployed. We've developed that new platform to be open and with a range of common services and data stores with AI and machine learning capabilities built in from the ground up. Those services underpin the AI service management, service ops and AI ops capabilities, which are then leveraged by the applications you deploy. You can deploy those applications selectively and independently as your needs grow. With that context, let's take a look at the new logical architecture for BMC Helix Innovation Suite 21.3. Here we have a logical architecture of a Kubernetes cluster deployed inside a customer's network. That large gray box in the center is the Kubernetes cluster, which in reality is deployed across multiple physical or virtual machines. Starting at the top left, you can see hosted in the cloud is BMC's Docker Trusted Repository or DTR. That's where BMC will host the container images which are needed to deploy our software. We'll talk in a bit more detail about software deployment later in the presentation. Our deployment process is fully automated using the BMC deployment engine. That's effectively the same set of open source software that we use to automate the deployment, patching and upgrade of our software on BMC Helix SaaS. It's possible to connect the BMC deployment engine directly to the BMC Docker Trusted Repository and run a deployment into your Kubernetes cluster. However, we don't expect many customers will be able to do that for security reasons. Therefore, we support an air gap deployment where you're able to synchronize a local harbor repository. That's a piece of open source software designed to support the management of container images. You can synchronize that harbor repository with our BMC Docker Trusted repository and then run your automated deployment from that local harbor repository. That means you can run your deployment without requiring an internet connection for the BMC deployment engine. Bottom left, you can see user traffic coming in via an external load balancer before coming into the Kubernetes ingress controller. We offload TLS at the load balancer, so all communications within the Kubernetes cluster do not use HTTPS or TLS. This is fully secure and compliant with our FedRAMP certification as data is always secure when at rest. Within our Kubernetes cluster, you can see there are multiple logical tiers. Let's start with the innovation suite, user web and platform tiers. If you're familiar with the architecture of Remedy ITSM or Remedy, you can see a number of familiar names here. There's a mid-tier container, Smart IT, DWP, Live Chat, Smart Reporting, all those components you would typically deploy as servers in your web tier in a server-based architecture. Within the platform tier, you can see user, integration, and admin. Those are effectively a combined ARS, ITSM, and Innovation Suite server running as an individual container. Those platform containers are interacting as they do now with a database server running your Innovation Suite database, which now combines Remedy ARS, Smart IT, DWP and DWP catalog databases. You can see that top right on our diagram. We will continue to support Oracle and MSSQL for that external database, but we're also adding Postgres support in this release. We're seeing great performance from Postgres on BMC Helix SaaS, so it's worth considering that as a way to reduce your overall total cost of ownership. Now let's look at the platform and data lake tiers. These make up the common platform onto which all of our containerized applications are deployed. There can be up to 100 BMC containers running as microservices in a full deployment. Now we'll only deploy those services that you need to use for your selected applications, and these are very lightweight auto-scaling services. In our data lake, we're using best-in-breed open source services. These services are deployed as containers into the Kubernetes cluster by the BMC deployment engine using container images which BMC distributes and manages. Where those services need to store persistent data, they use a Kubernetes storage class to store the data on a file system. 
those services are not something we're asking our customers to actively manage. They will effectively be transparent and BMC will manage the upgrade of those services moving forwards. That means you won't need to stand up those services outside of Kubernetes. You won't need skills to manage them, but you will need to manage the backup of the persistent data stores that we put on the file system. Let me take a moment to compare our common ADE platform with our innovation suite containers. For our common ADE platform, we have a microservices architecture, which is auto scaling and highly efficient. On the other hand, the innovation suite architecture is effectively a server-based architecture in containers. It doesn't currently support auto scaling and it's not leveraging all of the capabilities of Kubernetes. And that's one of the drivers for moving away from the legacy server-based architecture. We can now focus engineering effort on re-architecting innovation suites to use containers more effectively. You can expect to see further enhancements in this area in future releases. For those who are really interested in what all those services in the data lake are doing, here's the next level of detail. So Kafka Zookeeper is enabling resilient communication between containers. Postgres deployed within the data lake is used for structured data like the AI algorithms for ITSM Insights. Elasticsearch is used for full text search in ITSM. We're effectively replacing Lucene with Elasticsearch and for collating common platform and some of the ARS system logs. Redis is used for cache data that allows services to be started more quickly. And Victoria Metrics is used for time series data, which supports ITSM Insights. I'd like to show for a moment the BMC Helix operations management logical architecture for comparison purposes. You'll see here that we have the same data lake and the same common services, which underpin the Innovation Suite application. That means that we can deploy multiple applications like Innovation Suite and Operations Management onto the same Kubernetes cluster. Both applications will share the same common platform services. That shared use of the services makes our software even more efficient. This is very much part of our overall vision. Our goal is to make it easy to deploy multiple BMC solutions onto the same platform and gain the ability to reveal actionable insights across those applications using machine learning and AI natively deployed in our platform. I'd now like to look in more detail at the fresh installation process using the new container-based architecture and compare that with the same process using the server-based legacy architecture so we can see just how much better things get with containers and automation. The deployment process for a new ITSM installation can be quite complex and typically involves multiple internal groups. Here, we start with a database server already available. The first step is to deploy the new infrastructure that will host the virtual machines. Once that's deployed by the infrastructure team, then the VM team will create the virtual hosts and configure them with connectivity. Then the network team will create an external load balancer for web traffic and an internal load balancer for our ARS servers. It's at this point that the work of the Remedy team usually starts. We have to download multiple installation packages from BMC EPD, upload them to each of the servers, and then we install ARS. In this case, we've got six VMs, which will be ARS servers in this architecture. So we have to repeat that process six times. The first installation takes a while because it's creating our ARS database. We can then install the mid-tier servers. In this infrastructure, we have six of those, so that's six uploads and six installs. We also need to configure each mid-tier so it's got connectivity through the internal load balancer to the right ARS servers and make sure we get the connectivity password correct. We can then install the multiple packages to install the ITSM application. Typically, that first installation takes the longest time because it's building the whole ITSM uh, application in the database. We can then configure ITSM for the new environment. We would then install the other IT service management applications. So we install and configure DWP, Smart IT, and DWP Catalog. Finally, we then have to work through the connectivity between all of these components. And it's here that I've seen it take several days to hammer out all of the issues. Just one password wrong in any component and you have odd intermittent issues in testing that turn out to be because one person fat fingered a password in one of the mid tiers. In short, this is not a fun process and one that has multiple manual steps and potential failure points. I typically plan a minimum of two weeks to get an installation and configuration 100% correct in a new production system. So now let's take a look at the same operation in the new world of containers and automation. So we're starting with BMC EPD and our Docker trusted repository available. We need to deploy the infrastructure in Kubernetes. 
We then create the BMC deployment engine, downloading the BMC automation artifacts and the container access key linked to your account from BMC EPD. That container access key is just a password that you can use with your BMC registered account that allows you to download containers directly from BMC DTR. We would then synchronize our local harbor repository with BMC DTR so that we can perform the deployment without needing to have access to the internet. Finally, we then configure and trigger the deployment engine to deploy the whole application infrastructure and restore the pre-configured databases. This automatically deploys all of the container images and the internal load balancers. Everything is automatically wired together and working. No more intermittent issues because of a mistake entering a password. That whole deployment is typically complete within a few hours. If you want to add an AR server, you can just adjust the number of replicas and it's there automatically. This is a huge step change in the way that we deploy the BMC Remedy ITSM architecture with faster, more accurate deployments with the same automation which BMC uses on our BMC Helix SaaS. This improvement is also seen in the upgrade and patching process where the BMC deployment engine automates the deployment of patching across the estate, typically with zero downtime. Let's focus on the new software distribution and automated deployment processes. The way we distribute software is changing due to containerization. BMC EPD, the electronic product download site, will work exactly as it does today. You'll need a valid support contract and a registered account to log in to download software. We're going to use EPD to distribute the non-containerized software, for example, BMC Developer Studio. EPD will also have the automation artifacts used by the BMC deployment engine. You'll also be able to download the container access key, which you can use as a password to log into BMC DTR from EPD. Container images which are used by Kubernetes to deploy container instances are not monolithic files. They need specialized software to be able to handle them effectively. We're using a Docker trusted repository that's going to host all BMC containers at containers.bmc.com. We expect the majority of our customers to use a local harbor repository synchronized with our DTR for installations. The BMC deployment engine is a stack of open source software which we use on BMC Helix SaaS to perform automated deployment, automated patching and automated upgrades. The software includes Ansible for script based automation and Jenkins which orchestrates that automation and provides a great UI to track progress. The BMC deployment engine is gonna be responsible for fresh installs, upgrades from 2105 onwards, patching, adding new applications, and we also plan to extend the automation to enable environment management tasks like scaling and certificate deployment. Let's take a closer look at that BMC deployment engine. Here on the left, we have a Harbor repository, which has already been synchronized with the BMC DTR and has all of the container images ready to deploy. On the right, we have the Kubernetes cluster, with nothing currently deployed. And in the middle, we have the BMC deployment engine with a Jenkins pipeline ready to deploy the Innovation Suite application. When we trigger the pipeline, the automation pipeline will typically perform pre-checks to verify that the installation can go ahead, and then we'll start to deploy container images from Harbor into the Kubernetes cluster, creating multiple containers or replicas according to the configuration that we provided. How do we get to this fantastic new platform, this promised land, if you have a Remedy ITSM server-based architecture right now? Recent upgrades to BMC Remedy ITSM have been pretty straightforward. Typically, customers have applied the upgrade directly to the production environment during a short outage or, or sometimes with a zero downtime. Because we're changing the whole infrastructure, that upgrade in place approach simply isn't possible. For upgrades to the new containerized platform, we recommend a staged upgrade method. So you would first create a new parallel system using Kubernetes or OpenShift. You then deploy out of the box containerized Innovation Suite 21X. You then migrate all of your workflow customizations from your existing system. And then you use BMC tools, including BMC Helix Data Manager, um, to migrate all of your data from BMC Helix ITSM, Digital Workplace, Digital Workplace Catalog, Smart IT, and Smart Reporting. This is the same process which we use to migrate customers from on-premises to BMC Helix SaaS. So it's a really well-tested process. There's no data loss and you can retain all of your valid customizations with this process. On that topic of valid customizations, 
All workflow customizations are fully supported. Your investment in the platform is fully supported. You can carry that forwards with the new containerized release with the exception of server-side run process commands, which we recommend converting to more modern technologies like web services or REST API calls. The reason for that restriction is the file system for the BMC containers should be considered as immutable and cannot be used to host custom processes. Other than that minor restriction, there are no real limits on what you can do with a new containerized release using Remedy Workflow. In the 21.3 release, we're able to support direct upgrade to the latest 21.3 on-premises release from ITSM and Smart Reporting 9.1 and Smart IT 2.0. That's a really wide range of direct upgrades which are now possible. For DWP Catalog, we can support upgrade from 20.02 and DWP 19x and above. There are some real benefits for using this staged upgrade approach. Using the new parallel system, you can fully validate the new container architecture and any changes you make to the application prior to switching over. In my experience, that results in very fast cut cutovers with a minimal outage time. It also means fewer production issues after go live because you've had the opportunity to fully validate the new production architecture before going live. This approach also gives you some options that aren't easy with an upgrade in place. You could remove unused customizations. You can reduce your data volume safely and while retaining data integrity by migrating less data with BMC Helix Data Manager. You can transform your data or even move to a different database. We're moving our entire BMC Helix SaaS estate over to Postgres because we're getting such great performance and reductions in cost. So I'd recommend looking into this as an option for this planned upgrade. We appreciate that not all of our customers right now are in the same place in their journey towards containerization. For those who are completely new to containers, this is going to be a bigger change. BMC is committed to supporting you on this journey. Please reach out through the BMC help desk or your account manager if you're planning an upgrade to get support directly from BMC. Our recommendation is for all customers who are planning to remain on premises is go ahead and deploy this new innovation suite 21.3 into a development environment. Use that new containerized system to understand and plan for the changes this technology um, is going to bring to your operations, to your day to day operations, to your integrations, to your platform, and then plan your upgrade. I really hope this was useful. We're super excited about this new container release. I'd like to talk a little bit about our future roadmap. We've released Innovation Suite and Operations Management for the first time on-premises in September of this year. We have the second release of Innovation Suite 21.3 planned for December. That's going to include the fantastic new ITSM Insights and Helix dashboards. ITSM Insights provides amazing AI service management capabilities. Please take a look at the demos we have online. It really is a game changer. BMC Helix dashboards is the reporting solution that's going to replace smart reporting next year. Also in December, we have the 21.3 release of BMC Helix Operations Management, AI Ops, Intelligent Automation, and Helix Continuous Optimization. Early next year, we expect to release Virtual Agent for the first time on-premises, as well as further refinements to the upgrade and deployment automation based on customer feedback. With regards to container platform support, the 21.05 release in September supported Kubernetes 1.18 and OpenShift 4.6. This 21.3 release significantly expands the supported versions, allowing you to deploy on Kubernetes 1.18 up to 1.21 and OpenShift 4.6 through 4.8. This allows you to deploy on vendor supported versions of Kubernetes and OpenShift, and we expect future releases of Innovation Suite will allow customers to stay within vendor support for the underlying Kubernetes platform. Early next year, we expect to document and verify the deployment of our containerized software on the three most popular public cloud managed Kubernetes platforms. Those are AWS Elastic Kubernetes or EKS, um, Azure Kubernetes Service or AKS, and Google Kubernetes Engine or GKE. If you don't have in-house skills to manage Kubernetes, then those public cloud services can greatly simplify the deployment, management, and future upgrade of Kubernetes. Finally, I'd like to show one slide with some technical detail on compatibility. I'm not going to read this whole slide, but I will call out a few important items here. We require the Nginx ingress controller, even if you're using OpenShift. That's a very well tested and our documentation has details on how to use that 
uh, Nginx Ingress Controller instead of OpenShift Route. For load balancers, we internally test at BMC with F5 load balancers, but you can use any load balancer that provides SSL offload, X forward headers, upstream of ingress, reverse proxy, and unaltered response redirects. And for security certificates, we can support R3 or Digicert certificates currently, but I expect that to be extended to self-signed and arbitrary certificates very soon. Well, that's all from our recorded session today. Thank you very much for your time. I really hope it was a useful insight into our new containerized Converge platform. The one thing I'd like to emphasize is that we are all on this journey towards this modern architecture together, and BMC really wants to support customers in making that journey. So if you have any queries or concerns, please reach out via our BMC community site or directly to me at robin underscore ashford at bmc.com. Thanks again for your time today. Let's now start our virtual Q&A session. Okay, Robin, great presentation. Let's see if I can do this. Um, uh, we have a microphone and camera this time up here. Uh, are there any questions here in the room? Anyone would like, okay, can you, can you come up here? Kate? Yeah, Kate's gonna come up here uh, uh, and, and ask you a question. Um, and do we have any, we have a question in the chat, there, Bob, do you know if that's, somebody has a question? Okay, all right. So uh, here, there you go, Kate. Yeah, yeah, there's a microphone there. Go ahead. So in the past, we've kind of been uh, pointing our customers to SQL Server uh, as a database solution because we assume that's what you guys were using in the cloud. But it sounds like now you're really pushing that Postgres. Can you give a little bit more detail into that recommendation and, and where they are from the customer side of things that way? So we've actually supported Postgres for a while now, but not made a big song and dance about it. I think now we're confident enough in the performance of Postgres and its, its ubiquity throughout the industry that we're now much more comfortable recommending it. We are moving our BMC Helix SaaS over to Postgres um, for obvious reasons. Um, it's a lot cheaper than MSSQL that you, you can't argue with free. Um, and we are seeing great performance. Um, it, it's not something I'm um, pushing really hard, but obviously any opportunity that we have for customers to reduce total cost of ownership, we want to recommend that. You are absolutely um, solid to stay on MSSQL and Oracle. We're not planning to withdraw that support in any way, shape or form. So if you're happy on MSSQL, if you're happy on Oracle, feel free to stay there. But Postgres is now a real viable option. And it's a, it's a free database, right? Yeah, and so migrating into a SaaS environment from an on-prem environment, if you're set up in Postgres, it seems like that would be a little bit easier. It, it okay. Yes, it would. Um, what we're seeing from MSSQL to Postgres, Oracle into Postgres, is that um, Postgres is um, a little bit different around the way it handles nulls in unique indexes. So um, in MSSQL, if you have two nulls in a unique index, MSSQL doesn't mind. Whereas Postgres says two nulls are the same value, you can't do that. That's the only real challenge we've seen. But we've seen, you know, when we were previously migrating from on-prem to SaaS, when we were moving from Oracle databases, case sensitivity um, on Oracle versus not case sensitive on MSSQL was throwing up unique index violations as well. It's not gonna make a, a whole, a huge amount of difference if you're on Postgres on-prem and you're, you're thinking about that as a springboard to SaaS, it's gonna, you know, it, it's, it's gonna save 30 minutes in the overall migration if you're lucky. Um, so it, it's not a prerequisite for going to SaaS. We will take you, we continue to plan to support customers moving from on-prem to SaaS from Oracle, MSSQL, or Postgres. Well, obviously, they're just a little bit different, but that makes sense to the, the, 
that's what your guys are going for for the the back end side. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, Kate. Um, we're going to take a question here in the chat, and I can bring up the chat in just a minute. Uh, we um, have, first have a question from uh, uh, from Caddy. Uh, she says, "Robin, is BMC offering a containerized upgrade or containerized upgrade training?" We are working on it. I think is is fair to say. Um, the um, we do not have training courses right now that walk you through that entire upgrade process. Um, what we do have some really great documentation. Effectively, the same process that we're using to upgrade our BMC Helix SaaS it, it, when we're migrating from on-prem to SaaS, it's the same process that we're asking customers to use for a staged upgrade. So, Cathy, in Cathy, your case, you've already done something very, very similar with that last upgrade, that building a parallel system, moving your workflow over, moving the data over using HTM, you've already gone through most of this. The challenges that we expect customers to face here is more around managing Kubernetes itself. Um, and, and to get away from that, you can come to BMC Helix SaaS if that's not for you. You can take some training. I, I, I um, got thrown into the, thrown to the walls when I first joined BMC. Um, I found it surprisingly easy to learn about containers and about Kubernetes. Initially, it seems quite daunting, but it's relatively straightforward. If you really don't want to manage Kubernetes, then you can look at things like AKS, EKS, GKE that just get rid of all of the challenges of managing Kubernetes and just deploy on that if you don't want to come to BMC with XSAS. Um, so we will be, I would anticipate, we will see more training courses coming online from BMC in the new year, but I would say the documentation is really good right now. Addy, did that answer your question? Do you have any follow-up that you want to unmute and ask, Robin? No, that answers my question exactly. And I, I don't doubt the documentation. Documentation for Alderstone was also excellent. No, oh, thank you. And so, Caddy, you're, are you uh, concerned on, on running this on, on your SIPR environment as well as your NIPR environment? Because I know Cade and I, we have uh, similar issues. And we had another man here that has, uh, you know, SIPR and NIPR environments. Are, are you uh, planning on running that in, in, in both or, or just in your NIPR environment or? No, we do, we only have it on Sipper. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Period. So, like Robin said, when we did this with him before, he he had no um, visual into our system at all. He had to go with what we told him, and <laughs> and it worked though. So you would more more than likely, I think, Robin, if I'm wrong, she would use the uh, the disconnected version where she's got her harbor her own local version of harbor that that synchronizes with bmc's repository Absolutely. yeah i i don't expect anyone um other than maybe partners or consultants kind of trying this process to actually run and install directly connecting to bmc dtr um with regards to federal space customers this has obviously been historically a big area of strength for bmc we are certainly working with a number of um, DOD customers who are upgrading right now to containerized version. Um, I, I think containerization is being picked up quite rapidly in the federal space. And we're looking at initiatives like Iron Bank um, and seeing if we can align with Iron Bank that makes it very easy for DOD customers to start deploying containers. Okay, good. Uh, Kate, just come back up here. And if we'll get to you in just a minute. Um, go ahead, Kate. So real quick, in another conversation, we were talking about replicated databases uh, for reporting purposes and stuff that way. How do you see supporting that in a containerized environment? So we are not supporting a replicated database for the um, current smart reporting. Um, my anticipation is we will support that. The database here is largely left by itself. Um, we need, to, obviously, to support that with our containers, but I don't see that as a problem. I would anticipate that when BMC Helix dashboards comes, well, it's being released in our 21.3 release, I would anticipate that will support a replicated database. There's no technical reason to say we couldn't run it that way. Um, I don't think we'll go, we're going to support that in 21.3, but my anticipation is next year we would probably support the ability to point BMC Helix dashboards at a separate replicated database. So, so just be aware, I've got we've got multiple customers that are trying to go containerize, and they both have replicated databases. So, just situational uh, for you guys. Understood. That's really helpful. Um, and again, I, I really want to emphasize that 
I and BMC are very much in listening mode here. We appreciate this is a big industry change that's taking place, and we really want to get your feedback and input into the roadmap. So please reach out with concerns. We may already be addressing them. They may be coming. It may already be in the product. Um, but I, I really want to hear your feedback on this, on this journey we're on. And by the way, we had a bunch of nodding heads uh, acknowledging uh, Kate's comment. So um, you just kind of give you some feedback there. Um, so Anders uh, asks for customers not currently running any Kubernetes clusters. Do you have any sizing recommendations for how much metal is required for the nodes? Anders, is that your question or do you want to unmute and, uh, and rephrase? Okay. I think. Yeah. All right, I'll go with the question as it stands. So um, we, uh, we should, within the next few days, um, certainly within the next week or so, have published uh, the results of our performance testing for Innovation Suite 2105, um, compact, which is a dev install, uh, small and medium. So those should be up on the BMC doc site very, very soon. We will then update our 21.3 release should be coming out in the next few weeks. Um, we will then update that guidance because 21.3 includes BMC Helix dashboards and ITSM Insights. I, I'm genuinely so excited about ITSM Insights. I can't emphasize enough how awesome the, the fact is that we're delivering AI capability, machine learning in the platform. We'll update that guidance for 21.3 in January. That's the current plan. Yeah. And it says, perfect. Thanks. Uh, I, I will ask a question. I know that there were at least two or three large customers, one that Darius referred to uh, in, a, in a discussion we had at VRUG and some universities here that don't actually use the packaged applications like ITSM. Uh, and they're using bespoke applications written in AR system. My question is, uh, I guess, will they um, they'll be forced to do the same thing, right? For um, future upgrades to the AR system platform to go to the containerized uh, deployment method for their bespoke applications written, uh, custom, custom applications written in AR system. Is that correct? Um, forced isn't the word I'd use, but um, <laughs> I, I do take on board the, the general sentiment. Um, yes, uh, we're going all in with containers. We, we genuinely believe this is the architecture of the future. BNC is not, we want to be leading. We want to be leading the industry. So yes, um, and, and the good news is I cut my teeth in this industry writing custom AR applications. You couldn't have a stronger advocate working within BMC for custom AR applications. We, we really believe in custom AR applications and the new stuff coming on board with Innovation Suite um, and Innovation Studio, there's some really cool stuff you can do with Innovation Studio. There's some great presentations. Um, I know one of my colleagues is, is explaining that. It's, there's some fantastic stuff you can do there. So if you like your bespoke application development, there's some great stuff coming. In the short term, right now, if you're on ARS only and you want to move, then we do not deploy only ARS platform. You're going to get the Remedy ITSM application because we restore that along with the database. That will be changing coming next year. Our intention is to expand our support so you don't automatically get um, you don't automatically get Remedy ITSM installed in the database. Um, but you can go ahead and implement right now if you've got custom AR application, you just slide that in alongside BMC Remedy ITSM, and you're good to go. But we do expect to have some enhancements here coming up in the new year. Thank you. That was Kate's question. It came up to ask. You probably saw my. <laughs> I wondered why it came up and it sat like that. Very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, Bill Clary asks the question uh, also, issue with installing this in OpenStack in process of getting BMC Consultant to work on this with us. Bill, I'm not sure if I've. Uh, Oh, it's just a comment. Okay, so that's not a, a question. Bill, do you have a question or do you want to open your mic and then? No, it's, it's not really a question. I just wanted to bring that up so everybody is aware. So our company is starting up with this OpenStack environment too. It's a new thing for our company too. And so we started moving our stuff into it. And now we're trying to um, move to the new containerized remedy and we found all kinds of problems with it because OpenStack by default is a NAT environment. So everything inside OpenStack is NATed. 
which a lot of these other applications, including this container, doesn't seem to like that. <laughs> so we've been having a lot of issues with that. So our leadership's already in the middle of, um, already had some meetings with getting some consultants in to work with us directly and see about working through this. Just wanted to let everybody know. Thanks, that's really helpful. Um, I'm gonna throw up a link into the chat window. Um, I, I just did a little Googling in the background um, to just check. Um, it looks like OpenStack is running Kubernetes, so you should be fine. Um, but this link is a link to the BMC community site for containers. That's currently a closed group, but we'll let anybody in. Um, it's a, it, that's a great pace, place to post questions. We're building up a really, we're effectively incubating a little community there. Um, that's working really, really well. So we've got people helping each other. So that might be a good place, Bill, to post some questions, get some feedback. There's a, a R&D are looking at that every day. Our support team are looking at that every day. And we've got other customers helping each other in that, in that community, which is exactly what we built communities for. So please do take a look there. You may find some other people trying to do the same thing. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Kate and everybody. Um, so we're getting close to running out of time and LJ's for here ready to go uh, next to me. Uh, thank you so much, Robin, for two great presentations back to back. And I, I will say personally, and I know that talking to the folks here that have actually attended uh, physically in Vegas, we're, we're happy to hear that BMC is in is in listening mode, right? Uh, because I, a lot of us that are that are just wondering where where and how to get where to follow where BMC is leading us. So thank you again for that, um, and we appreciate your presentation. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for organizing this. It's really really appreciated. And um, please feel free to reach out. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.